Hey nature enthusiasts, check out what I found. This little cluster of mushrooms are a species called oyster mushrooms. And they're just a wonderful mushroom to find. So you find these mushrooms growing on dead wood. And that's in fact what this is. This is a gigantic old cottonwood tree that fell over years ago and has been decaying here. And here, we've had rain for the past few days here in California. And now, what has popped out but this lovely cluster of oyster mushrooms? Cute little cluster. They are these beautiful mushrooms that form these shelves. And the clusters can get much, much bigger. This is actually a fairly small one. But still, always lovely to find. And they don't just grow on cottonwoods like this one. They grow on all sorts of different trees. All sorts of different dead, decaying wood. Um, and they do some really interesting things. So generally, most mushrooms, most fungi, are very important decomposers. They help break organic matter once it's dead down into its component nutrients and allows that nutrients to cycle back into the soil and go back into the ecosystem, go back into the nutrient cycling of, of the natural world. And so they form, they, they serve a really important function that way. And to do that, they pull their nutrients from the dying and dead material that they're living in, in, case, in this case, the wood of this tree. <laughs> but that's not the only place that they get nutrients. Oyster mushrooms are a very weird fungus. And that is that not only do they pull their nutrients from dead material, they are also carnivorous. Yep, carnivorous mushrooms. These fungus trap tiny, tiny little worms called nematodes otherwise known as roundworms. And they secrete a toxin that paralyzes and kills the nematodes. Now these nematodes are living inside the dead organic matter inside the tree. And they are in large part doing a similar thing as the fungus itself. And that is breaking down the dead matter, digesting it, and allowing that nutrients to recycle into the environment. But but the roundworms don't know what's coming because the fine, fine structures of mycelium, which are what makes up most of the fungus that spread into the tissue of the dead tree, almost like roots, similar physical structure, even though they're made up of very different types of cells and they have a lot of differences. But physically, they, you can think about them. They kind of look like very, very fine hair-like roots working their way down into the material inside of the dead tree. And as they do that, when they find a new nematode, they can secrete this small amount of toxin that, as I said, paralyzes and kills the nematode and then digests it right there where it dies, thereby allowing the mushroom to absorb the nutrients from that dead digesting nematode and make it into itself, use it itself. So it's a pretty unusual thing for a fungus to do, to be carnivorous, to actually kill and consume animals. But oyster mushrooms are one of them. Now, in case you're wondering, oyster mushrooms are very definitely edible. Now. As I've said before, and will say again, before you eat any mushroom, or really anything you find out in the wild, you need to be absolutely sure what you're dealing with. You need to be 100% confident with your identification, and also you need to know how to handle it once you've picked it. Some things can be eaten raw, some things cannot. You have to know all the stuff before you eat anything. So go with experts. Learn, learn everything you can about the wild and the wild edibles that you're thinking of consuming. But if you do that, if you, if you really learn oyster mushrooms really well, you will be 
very well rewarded because they're delicious and they're often abundant. They come out also all sorts of places after the rains. Uh, and they're very relatively easy to identify. There aren't that many species that look like an oyster mushroom that aren't oyster mushrooms. And there are very few, if any, toxic lookalikes. So it's, it's a fairly easy and good introduction to wild foraging, if that's something that interests you. So, learn your wild mushrooms. And if you decide to do that, oyster mushrooms are a great place to start. And if you do, and if you find some, and if you bring them home, and if you eat them, you will have the added bit of knowledge that you're not eating a normal mushroom, you're eating a carnivorous mushroom. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment on maybe some times that you found a wild mushroom that you've been curious about, in particular, if it's one that you've known was edible. And also, please share this channel and subscribe to it so that the word about this kind of information can get out farther and wider and we can grow the channel together. Until next time, enjoy the natural world.